Hey folks, it's Chris again. I thought I'd talk to you about some of the sanguine drawings that sometimes you see in the museums that tend to be these orangey brown colors. But like this one, it's too orange and it needs some help. So what happens with the sanguine, let's just go ahead. It's called iron oxide and it comes in different colors. I don't know if they cook it and burn it like burnt sienna and raw sienna. Raw sienna is a certain color, tends to look like this. And in oil paint, when they burn it, it tends to look redder. So I don't know if it's a chemical change or how they're doing this and, or is it just different minerals, the, the iron oxide that this is coming from. A, a lot of people love this stuff, but for me, it's a little offensive. So of these Conti crayons that come in different various colors, sometimes a little trick that I found works so nicely is when I take the color and I've drawn it in, all I take is a 6H pencil, the 9000 um, Faber-Castell graphite pencil, and I start shading over the color and it's barely tinting the white and darkening a little bit. And if I feel like that's just not dark enough and I want to go a little darker, then I could do that with an F. And what you're actually getting is a browner color that's closer to what you'd see in the museum. You see, this color is iron oxide. And over a few hundred years, 100, 200, 400 years, it's gonna oxidize and become a darker brown. So if you want to play with the Conti colors and you're not sure why your color doesn't look like the museum, well, it hasn't been outside exposed to the air long enough. And you can do that and work on that with a regular graphite, either F or 6H. Be careful, I'm a big fan of the 9000 series Faber-Castells. Some of the pencils get too soft and they will damage your painting. Um, to touch a base with that, I also have certain pencils that you could use that are in different sizes or different colors. And I typically work from light to dark and I put my yellows in one grouping my bright orange and reds in another grouping, and then my darker gray browns all the way to black in another grouping. And we can add the links to these on the bottom of the page, and we'll just take a photograph of them. And the companies that I use for this is, um, this is Pitt by Faber-Castell. And that does most of my work with these pastel pencils. Uh, now and then I'll try the Conti. So the same stuff that comes in this thing also comes at a point. I tend to sharpen this with a razor blade, even though the factory is able to sharpen it without a razor blade. Uh, I do use stumps to help soften. It's my medium stump I've talked about. So if I leave that and I say, okay, real quick, then what surface is? Without a doubt, the pastel paper by Canson is a favorite. You know, Metiens is the type, Canson is the company. And it comes in different types and varying colors. So this one is different browns and gray browns. Um, this one tends to be more grays and more neutrals. And um, a big fan of this stuff. Now, and I also use it for charcoal. There is a problem with this, and let me grab a piece and just pull it from the sheet. There's two sides to this pad. So what happens with the drawing pad, and I'll do it with white so you see it. When I shade on one side of the pad, I get a certain texture. And then when I shade on the other side, there's a honeycomb texture. Now the pastel world loves this honeycomb texture. They just absolutely love it. I don't, I find texture offensive. It attracts attention. It tells me where to look when I don't want someone to look there. I tend to use the smooth side and it always has the label on it. So whatever size has the label on it is the smooth side. Cause I think they think this is the back of the painting. Why does the art world insist on using the honeycomb side. Well, when you make a mistake, and the more you make a mistake, the more chalk you have to put over something, the more you have to fix it. 
For me, our whole drawing program, the whole purpose of everything we do is let you know what you need to do, you know how to do it, and you're gonna be shown what to do, and therefore you don't have to layer this 300 times to go over it to fix it. You don't need that padded room. There's enough mistakes that you can go over on this side and not need this side. So some of the things I like, uh, I'm a big fan of the Canson papers. Um, some of my favorite colors are all over the place. I mean, I like the felt gray. I like, um, uh, what is this color? Pearl and uh, sand. So there's different colors that I use all the time. I think felt gray, pearl, and sand are the two that I use the most, and they do a great job with portraits. Now I have some examples of that. And this is the felt gray. It's a quick sketch, it never got finished. It was just me working out some issues. And I tend to use uh, the dark char, I use the paper as much as I can. Like I'll try to go from the white highlight to the gray of the paper. And then the, the, that's the dark on the light is the gray of the paper. And then the light on the dark side will be the gray of the paper. And it's a great 19th century drawing principle teaching you the dark on the light becomes the light on the dark. So I love using these pastels. They're very fast. They're very quick. You know, in a couple hours, you did a drawing. You're just going to throw it away. Anyhow, it's just a sketch. And uh, it just makes life easy and fast for you to see, am I going to paint this? There's, is there something here um, to that drawing? And um, I hope you like it. If you need links to any of these products, we'll list the pencils that I use, including the Contes, in the show notes below and the descriptions where you can help find them or hopefully find them. And if you need to know how we do our drawings and why we do it and, and what makes this so unique and so special, then please visit us at uh, artsecretstudio.com where we can introduce you to having a voice in art. <laughs>